Ah, the Library of Babel. Jonathan Basile's creation faithfully reproduces a library once described by this man here. Jorge Luis Borges, who wrote a story of the same name back in 1941, describing a library that seemingly infinite contains every page of text that could ever be printed, every combination of letters arranged and in 40 lines of 80 characters. Originally written in Spanish, only consisted of, I think, 23 letters. Jonathan Basile created a library electronically that consisted of 29 letters to cater for uh, the English language. This library is all contains all the pages, but they're all generated. They're not stored. It is a gargantuan feat, really. Uh, it captured my imagination years ago, and um, I even sent an email to uh, to Jonathan Basile commenting on his library. If you're not familiar with it, uh, but you probably are, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video, but uh, to give you an idea, we'll show what it does. We can say search for, let's just paste in a, the date today and go for search. And it finds where that text is in the library. We can display that page. It's the entire page where it's just that text. And it has um, the address of where it is in the library which we can go to here. Um, the library consists of hexagonal rooms uh, with four bookcases arranged on four of the walls with two interconnecting passageways to neighbouring hex hexagons. Um, it, it, it looks like it's a, um, a reasonable sort of feat of where this book might reside, in which page it is. It says here that it's it has a name for the hexagon, which wall, which shelf, which volume. But it's a little, um, it, it doesn't really show you uh, the vastness of what this library is. Uh, this, this hexagon here is, uh, is represented as a number in base 36. It's got all the letters of the uh, alphabet, plus all these digits 0 to 9, giving 36 combinations of, of letter um, but the length of this is what's daunting it, it, it's around 3,800 characters in length now uh, this library um, it just captured my imagination and I, I decided to write a, an impl implementation of a, a program uh, in um, C Sharp to basically reproduce what this library does. Uh, I can demonstrate my program here. Um, it starts off with an acknowledgement of Jonathan Basile um, and his website, the um, URL to his website. But uh, my library is not quite as fancy. It's uh, form based and um, it's not very big actually uh, to install. I, I can I can uh, post the uh, URL to my um, to my installer, which I have on my Google Drive. Uh, if somebody there would like to try it out, they're most welcome to. Um, but my library is, is somewhat similar. If I go to search for the same string, and uh, we have the option of we have the option of um, surrounding with just random text or we can just find this text and what, what would happen is the, uh, the program pads the rest of the page just with spaces so when we go find text we we have a similar thing it has the hexagon name which is this page 36 number shows which wall which shelf which book and which page to give you an idea how big the hexagon is I can copy this, 
and paste it say into notepad and that gives you an idea this is the name of the hexagon this is a base 36 number around 3800 characters in length now um, that's that's a number that's so large it, it's almost incomprehensible uh, as to how big that number is um, we won't save that for the moment we'll just discard that so here we have this uh, here we have this page that has a unique location in the library and we look at the next page and we see it's just rubbish go back to our page previous page just rubbish so this page here that I've typed in and effectively searched for is like a gem amongst a sea of absolute chaos to try and find this page even though it's always been there always at this place the chance of finding it is absolutely remote in the program too I've got a couple of a couple of well, a few searches of, of things that people might want to look for like um, the first page of Genesis in the Bible for example all the text of the first page at this hexagon, this wall, shelf number one, book number 20, page number 59. In a sea of chaos, the previous page, utter gibberish. The next page, utter gibberish. You can try and search for something. You can try. You can change the hexagon here and go searching. But you would spend lifetimes trying to find where this is. In the next part of this video I will show the code that generates this program and give you an explanation of how it all works. So how does it all work? Well basically what happens is you have your text here in a page it consists of 40 characters wide and it is 80, 80, um, 80 lines so we have 3200 characters we only use 32 characters in my implementation and I'll explain why this is or his, uh, I mean the SEALS version uh, is only 29 characters but there's a problem with using only 29 and I'll explain what that is later so we have 32 characters here um, which is actually um, 2 to the power of 5 and that's, that's a very important fact because what I do as the first operation of the program is when you enter some text the page is spaced out to 3200 characters with spaces the second step in the process is to pack the 3200 characters into 2000 bytes now how this is done basically is because each character is only 5 bits and a byte is 8 bits we can shuffle characters in to a 2000 byte array exactly without any spaces so once we have this byte array of 2000 bytes then we apply the scrambling process and this is this is really where the magic, if you could call it that, happens. This is a reversible process that converts this 2000 byte array into an effectively scrambled byte array. Now this scrambled array will basically convert every, two th every byte of this 2000 byte array into some other completely seemingly random 2000 byte array. So you can effectively have every combination of bytes that you would have had here depending on what what the scrambling process entails but it has to be reversible once you get this byte array you can go back to the original so once we have this scrambled byte array this consists of 2000 bytes of numbers from 0 to 255 so this can be then represented as a big integer number so 255 combinations of bits for 2000 bytes 
is an enormous number. Once we make this big integer, this actual integer is around 20, uh, 24,800 digits. So you can think of this as just a crazy number, crazy large. Once we have this number, we can then break it down. We can divide the number by 410, because there are 410 pages uh, in each book. First of all, we do a modulo of this big integer by 410. And the modulo will give us a number from 0 to 409. That gives us the page number. Then we divide big integer by 410. The next step is we get the book number. There are 32 books in each shelf. So then we do a modulo of 32 to get a number 0 to 31. Give us our book number. Then divide begin by 32. Do the same to get the shelf number. But there are five shelves, so we do a modulo 5, getting a number from 0 to 4. Divide big integer by 5. Then do the wall number. There are four walls. So you do a modulo 4, getting a number 0 to 3. And then you'll be divided by 4. So, at the end, what begin represents, this big integer, what it represents is the hexagon. The hexagon address. So all we need to do is convert big integer to this base 36 number and save it as a string. And that is stored in the hexagon box in the... Uh, in the application. So it's not really a search, it's a computation. And that that's how the actual address of the text, of any text that you enter, that's how it's actually produced. The next step, or part of the process I should say, um, that the program does is browse. Now what browse does is basic does the reverse of this whole process. You create a big integer from the hexadon address, then you multiply by the number of walls and add in the wall number, multiply by the number of shelves, add in the shelf number, multiply by the number of books and add in the book number, multiply by the number of pages and add in the page number. Then we have this big integer which then packed into 2000 byte array. We descramble the 2000 byte array into another byte array, and then we unpack the 2000 byte array into a 3200 character array. And then we can display that in the text box. So it's just a reverse of this process. Go back to the process, here we go. It's basically doing these same steps, but in reverse. So we have this big integer, make the scrambled array, then we descramble it back into a 2000 byte array, which is then unpacked into the text box. So really, this, this text box is just a different representation of this address after the descrambling process. So now, we can actually go and have a look at some of the code. When I originally wrote this program, it was a bit of an exercise actually to uh, to use C Sharp, which I'd, uh, I'm a professional programmer, I'm retired now, but uh, I heard that uh, Visual Studio was, um, there was a, uh, a community edition, effectively free, uh, for anyone who wants to learn how to program in C Sharp, uh, I think you can even produce some products up to a certain value before you, you have to actually pay uh, Microsoft for the, uh, for the Visual Studio. But in my case, this was simply a learning exercise and, um, and I, I haven't had to pay anything. So here we, we basically have the code for the, um, how to generate the library. And it's not, not very large, actually. Most of the text here is at the beginning is what those search boxes are for. Um, but the code is uh, not really very long. Um, it turned out to be a far simpler process than I, than I thought. Um, the hardest part um, the hardest part was uh, 
the scrambler and the scrambler how to actually do that um, because what I wanted was neighboring pages for any any text that you might search for to be completely scrambled no artifacts of, of, of anything that uh, was in the page that you actually searched for so uh, searched pages were like gems of wisdom amongst the sea of absolute and utter chaos uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate what I mean by that uh, later but um, first off we um, I can show the the design of the page it's just a uh, very simple uh, form arrangement of the hexagon box the text box and list boxes representing the wall shelf book and uh, and page um, so really um, what, what we what we do is we have two two main functions um, first I, I should explain a bit about the scrambler it, it, it's basically an encryption process encryption was a simple choice really because it's a reversible you decrypt text you it comes out as a uh, random seemingly random uh, chaotic uh, set of numbers and then you can de de uh, decrypt those numbers back into the original text uh, but what I found was um, that even even encrypting and decrypting if I made slight changes to the original text there were sometimes I could see artifacts and uh, I didn't want that so I ended up doing a combination of things um, I ended up um, I ended up basically this is the uh, the packing process it packs the uh, characters into an array then there's an unpack process which does, does the reverse but um, the main um, part of the code I guess is down here where we look for the um, browse, oh, here's browse page for example you can see where the very first thing I do is make a big integer unfortunately C sharp has um, as a big integer class where you can have arbitrary sized uh, arbitrary sized numbers this is doing all the work for me really um, this made writing this program very very simple so we make this big integer um, out of all the characters in the uh, in the uh, hexagon address then we add in the wall number as I described and the shelf number the book number page number then um, Compact it into, uh, compact that all into a big integer. Then um, that that makes the uh, the array, the two thousand byte array. Then we go through the uh, encryption. So we had an encryption, and we I have a, a, a scrambler of bits, which is basically a uh, linear shift register, feedback linear uh, shift register. Then I reverse the array and uh, encrypt it again, and then descramble the bits into another array. The reason I reverse the array was to try and get rid of the artifacts, and the same with the linear feedback shift register as well. And it ended up working really quite well. So this this part of code here is actually the the whole uh, meat of the conversion from address to uh, address to, to page of text then it's just a simple matter of getting all the um, uh, characters out of this array and showing them in the text box and that's really all it is uh, that's for browse and search or find is just a reverse of this uh, if we look at the text of my code here you can see where um, uh, first of all, it checks to see whether you want to look for a, a, a page of surrounding text, uh, and it puts in the random characters, or it will just pad out, um, pad out the character, uh, the page with just spaces. We go further down. What we see is it packs the array of page bytes into a. 2000 byte packed array and then it goes through a reverse process here it does the descrambling then it does a decrypt 
reverses the array and it does a descramble and then it does an encrypt. So it's the reverse, exact reverse of the steps shown above in the browse. Then all it does is it basically um, gets the page number and then it extracts a book number, then the shelf number and then the wall number. And the last thing it does is ex the rest of the big integer is hexadecimal address, uh, the uh, hexagon address. And once it's got all that, base 36, it then displays the hex name. And that's really all it does. Um, that's, that's the whole two-part process of um, browsing and searching. So when we run this, uh, we'll run, run it as a debug version here. Uh, press start builds very quickly here we have uh, here we have the app if I go and search for a, um, a generated page one that's already been entered in you can see it works very quickly uh, it's quite uh, astounding really uh, how quick this is um, I guess it's a uh, a reflection of modern PCs, how fast they are, because there's a lot of computation going on here. And fortunately, this um, this uh, Visual C Sharp has uh, the main functions in it that I needed: the big integer and the encryption and decryption are already built in. So the rest of the application was really quite straightforward to write. Anyway, I hope this um, gives you a bit of a explanation of how Jonathan Basile probably implemented his web version. Um, the, the difference really with the 32 characters, as I explained earlier, that compacts exactly uh, into a 2000 byte array. If you use 29 characters, because it's not a power of two, there are, there are gaps. Um, you, you can pack it into an array, but when you scramble it, you'll get combinations of characters um, that, that, that don't exist in, in the 29 character set. So if you just search for any particular hexagon, like say if I clear the hexagon here, reset the list boxes back to 1, 1, 1 and 1, and then put in say hexagon 0 for example. Now if I browse to this, it will just be random junk, as, as Jonathan Basile's will as well. But now if I copy this, now let's say we go to another page, that'll be the easiest way. So we go to page, say, say 100, let's find page 100 here. Now browse to it, now we copy the text here, now clear everything, reset box, clear the hexagon. Now put in that random page. Now we can search for it, even though it's just random gobbledygook text. We can actually say find. And we see it comes up with hexagon zero, wall one, shelf one, book one, page 100. We can do that with any page that exists in the library. It will find it. Jonathan Basile's implementation would not be able to do this because basically because when we convert this address into a page it will have every combination of of bytes 0 to 255 which can be converted exactly into one of my characters uh, in my 32 character character set if you only had 29 characters there will be characters that don't exist in his in his character set 0 to 29 There'll be one for 30 and 31 and 29. It'll be zero, zero to 38 will be the characters, the existing 29 characters. But then there'll be combinations which give three characters that don't exist in his character set. So what Jonathan Basile most likely does in his implementation for those three extra characters is he repeats the existing characters so he can display it in his, his, his page. The problem then though is when you go to search those particular characters are indistinguishable from the ones he already has. 
the ones he's already defined is zero to uh, zero to twenty eight or twenty nine characters. So the number you end up having to decrypt to get back to the address will not be the same. So he won't be able to generate the original address. Um, but mine you can. You can go to any page you like and you'll always be able to find where it is, even if it's just a rubbish page. One thing I find uh, fun about it is it could be used as a... Um, because you can generate any... you can search for any page, you could use this to send secret messages. Like, say for example... Um, say for example we put in the Genesis page and we wanted to send this as a secret message. One way of doing this is we could just copy this hexagon and paste it into an email. So let's just paste it in a notepad for the moment. And we could send that to somebody as an email. And separately, send a text message of the wall, which is three, shelf one, book number 20, and page number 59. And then once they put all of this together, it will then find the page. So if we, um, let's just for the moment put this here. Uh, whoops, go back. We have uh, wall three, shelf one, book 20, and page 59. So if we clear everything here, clear the hexagon, reset the list boxes, and clear the text. So if they paste in the hexagon here, you just go paste and then put in that exact information here. Uh, 3, 1, 20, down to 20, uh, 20 and 59, we find 59, 59, and do browse. We go back to we find our page of Genesis. Another way we could send this as a, uh, a secret message to someone is instead of sending the hexagon and then the wall, shelf, book and page, what we can do is we could make mi a minor change to the hexagon. Say up here we could have got KK5 and R. If we were to just change these to something else, got to remember this. Got to remember the KK5, KK5R, because what we'll do is we'll change this to something arbitrary, say ZZZZ, something that they can recognise when they get the uh, message. Um, change it to KK5, K, KK5R to ZZZZ. So when we browse to this, we'll get just rubbish. So we email them the rubbish. We copy that and then paste it into Notepad or our email. Um, um, email program we just paste this into it and then we send them a separate text message with the KK5R so when they get this text and paste it in to search for it clear everything here um, reset the list boxes so what they do is they will search for that text find text and they will see you have instructions to them to look, look for these Zs in the hexagon, and there they are. So then they can put in the KK5R. KK5R. And then when they browse to this page, they get the original message. In this case, the Book of Genesis. So they didn't have to enter any wall, shelf, book, or page. All they needed to do was put the KK5R, find where the Zs are, and you don't even have to tell them. You just say, just find these uh, repeated Zs in the top line and put in the KK5R in the appropriate place and then do a browse. And the only way this will work is if, it can, if this program can actually search for any random page. And uh, that's... Uh, that's that's probably the great thing about this program is that uh, it is a completely reversible process from any page to any address, any address to any page. But I challenge anyone to go searching for any words of wisdom here amongst all of this chaos. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, be looking forward to any feedback.
Thank you very much. Bye-bye.